Hi everyone, Jeremy here. Thank you for watching today. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to make this shaker card. So I've doubled up on these tower die sets, added a shaker panel in the back, and then you've got the faux snow there. All this gorgeous detail with the uh, mirror card of the pattern papers. And I've ink blended the background and heat embossed the sentiment to my wonderful friend this Christmas. So you will see at the end of the video that the final card looks different to what I'm showing you now. Um, I wasn't entirely happy with the finish on the card. So I went back in and I followed the same process. I just ink blended the background using sponge sugar, kitsch flamingo and picked raspberry in distress oxides. I heat embossed the same sentiment. And then I just coloured in the tree. So at the end of the video, you will see a slightly different card. And as I said, I wasn't very happy with the finish. So I went back in and did some alterations. And it was really simple. I just took away this um, back panel here and then just added it um, back on. So if you're not entirely happy with something, then, you know, take... 10 minutes away from it, go back to it the next day. That's what I did. I went back to it um, a few days later and I'm really pleased with the final result now. So let's get into the tutorial. So I'll just quickly show you the products that I'm using. So I've got the 6x6 Circular Cracker die set, the Festive Fun Stampin die set and the Festive Sentiments set. So you want to cut this twice. So I've cut it the first time, just reinforce the score lines, and I'm going to set this to one side. I've got the die again, and within the set, you've got these additional panels to add your mats and layers. So I've got the smallest um, for the centre panel here. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I've tacked the largest die onto the white cardstock and I've also tacked the smallest die. I've just realised that that's slightly off there so I'm just going to recenter that. So once you're happy with that positioning I'm just going to run it through my die cutting machine. So once you've run it through you should be left with a piece like this. So we've got this really nice border around here and we're going to stable that piece with some acetate shortly. So next step is to bring in my scoreboard. Sorry about my squeaky chair. So it's the same as what I did with the um, complete piece of cardstock. Just pop that in your scoreboard. Just reinforce those score lines. I'm using 300 GSM, so this will help reduce any cracking within the cardstock. So you've got the end panel here, and then you've got a score line all the way from top to bottom. Then same across the centre of those two circles there. So on this um, score line here that's running through the centre of the circles, just mountain fold that. And then valley fold the end panel. Just give them a good crease. So once it's folded, you should have a piece like this. Next, I've got a piece of acetate and I'm going to attach this to the back of this panel. Using some thin red tape around the um, edge there and this will help stabilise the piece. So you'll just add that strength back in where we lost it by removing that panel. You could do one for the whole section if you wish, but I'm just going to do it for this area here. So I'm just going to run some red liner tape all around the edge there and attach that piece of acetate, and then I'll come back to you. Sorry, I forgot to mention the size of this piece. It's just under four by six, but if you cut it and then just check it against your panel to make sure it sits within that nicely, then you should be right. So 
So there's my acetate piece now attached. So that really stabilizes that front piece. And then when we add the back panel, that will also add some strength as well. So the next thing I'm going to do is decorate the front. And then we're going to set that to one side and work on the back panel. So bringing the die in again, I've cut these sort of ed um, end panels here and the circular elements. Just got them here. And I'll show you the paper pads that I'm using shortly. Just throw them all on my desk. <laughs> and the paper pad is the festive fun. Some really pretty designs here. And I love the colour palette on this paper pad. So you've got the teals, the greens, the pinks, and it just works so lovely together. So I've got these two end panels here. So I've got silver mirror card, and then I've got the pattern paper. I've got this green cardstock then to do the edge here, and then I've got silver and some pink cardstock to go in the circle elements. So get the gist of it. I'm going to um, just go off camera now and attach all of these down. So there's all the pieces now attached. So I'm going to set this to one side, let that dry, and we'll work on the back panel. So same process as I did with the first panel, except I didn't cut the aperture. So I ran it through my die cutting machine, reinforced those score lines, and then just added those folds i'm going to flip it over so it's going to be this way and then we've got the front piece then that attaches together like this so you want to cut yourself three panels that measure just under four by six and again as i said just measure that up to your back panel check that everything fits sits nicely within that section on the first one i stamped to my wonderful friend this christmas and the tree I've coloured in with alcohol markers and I've used the Creative Craft Products um, pens here. So I've got 33, 35, 53 and WG1. So I use that to colour in the image. With the green, I just added multiple layers to get that shading effect on that one. <clears throat> so that first panel with the image and the sentiment is going to sit on the back. <clears throat> the other two panels <clears throat> excuse me is to create the frame that's going to house the acetate so i've already gone ahead and cut this one so i'll just show you the process on how i achieve this so you've got your four by six panel and then you want to take your smallest center die here and line that up so it's right in the center tack that in place and run that through your die cutter machine and then you're left with this piece so i've cut two because i'm going to sandwich the acetate in between the two frames and then that will give me a really nice, strong sort of front panel to work with. So the acetate, again, is just under four by six. So it should all marry up. So I'm just going to run this panel through my die cutting machine. So now my two frames are ready. I'm just going to use some red liner tape on the back of this frame and attach the acetate. So I'm running really low on this thin amount so i might just have to add it to the top and bottom ideally you want to use a dry adhesive for this but as i'm in short supply i'm gonna to have to use a little bit of liquid glue So 
there's my acetate piece now attached to the frame so i'm actually going to discard the other frame because i'm in short supply of um, red liner tape so i'm just going to use um, this piece i'm going to add, add some foam adhesive then to create this um, acetate pocket so i've got these really thin strips that fit nicely within this section here i'm going to double up on these to make sure i've got enough height and i'm going to be adding some faux um, snow in this so i need to make sure i've got enough of a gap so that the elements can freely move around so these foam strips were from amazon um, and they come in really handy so i'm just making my way around the frame adding that foam adhesive within the frame section and as i said i'm going to double up on that so once that's done i'll come back to you so i've added three layers of foam make sure you don't have any gaps in your frame just in case some of these elements disappear i'm just going to pop some snow inside there that should be enough and then i'm going to carefully peel off the back in on these foam strips and then add my panel over the top So just remove some of the snowballs um it's too many in there now i think we've got a nice amount i cleaned the acetate with some alcohol um some rubbing alcohol and i think it's just made the inside slightly static but that should should go <laughs> she says so I'm just going to attach this panel to the back of the full panel there. So next I'm going to attach these two pieces together. So I'm going to add glue along the two end panels. So it all fold down flat like so got this really nice shape to it so i'm really pleased with how this one's turned out i think it looks really cool sorry about the light reflecting on the acetate there um let me know what you think about today's card um any of the products that i've used in today's video will be listed in the description box below i hope you've enjoyed the video have a lovely crafty day and i'll see you in the next one